Welcome to How to Make Dinner. Today we're making a really, really amazing coconut corn chowder. And I'm gonna show you how to turn the leftovers into this exquisite several days worth of dinners. Corn chowder is one of my favorite, favorite things in the world to eat. I grew up eating Campbell's chunky chicken corn chowder from a can. I don't really eat that anymore, although I will say I probably would still love it. <laughs> but nowadays I try and eat more homemade stuff. I don't try, I just do. Um, and this is one of my favorite corn chowders that I love to make. It's really become a staple in the last little bit. And it's a coconut milk corn chowder. So this coconut corn chowder is full of Coconut milk, obviously, lots of corn. You can use frozen or fresh, whatever you've got access to. And it's got sweet potatoes or yams instead of regular potatoes. So I'm gonna show you how I made this and then I'm gonna show you how to deal with all the leftovers because you're gonna have quite a few probably, especially if you're only one or two people like we are. So here we go. So a little bit of olive oil or vegetable oil in the bottom of a Dutch oven. And then I'm going in with two medium sized onions, diced, two teaspoons of salt. I'm using pink Himalayan, but you can use whatever you use. And then three sticks of celery, diced. And then those just kind of get tossed together and sweated down for a good five, six, seven minutes, something like that. I like to sweat with the lid on because I just find it kind of speeds things up a little bit. And then once those are slightly softened, we're gonna go in with the next round of ingredients. So I've got one red bell pepper diced around the same size as the onions and celery. And then three cloves of garlic and about an inch size piece of ginger, diced really small. You could also pound that in a mortar and pestle and that'd probably be even better. And then a teaspoon of ground cumin and one and a half teaspoons of ground turmeric. So I like to get those spices in before the liquid goes in because it just gives them a chance to kind of toast with the heat of the pan. Really kind of releases the aroma. And then going in with the sweet potatoes, I use 450 grams and then 450 grams also of corn. Um, the sweet potatoes, sometimes they're really, really big. Sometimes they're really, really small, which is why I recommend weighing them. And then just give that a little toss together before adding the coconut milk. Always choose coconut milk that you can't hear any sloshing when you shake them in the store. That way you know that there's a lot of the thick stuff on top, which is what you want. Light coconut milk needs to just be abolished. <laughs> it's basically just watered down coconut milk, which we can water it down ourselves. And it's free because water comes from a tap, which is what I did. I also added just enough water to cover the veggies. So you can see it, they're still kind of poking through. You can always add more liquid later, but it's better to add less and then add more if you need it. It's hard to take it away. So then we're just gonna simmer that. And I do put the lid on, um, simmer it for about 10, 15 minutes, just until the yams have softened. And then I like to take a potato masher to it just to smash up some of the yams. Cause I find it helps kind of marry the mixture together. It thickens up the soupy part and it kind of breaks up some of the chunky part and it kind of makes it just better. And at the very end, I add a big handful of any leafy green you want. So I'm using pak choy here cause that's what I have in my garden, but could be bok choy, could be kale, could be Swiss chard, could just be a bunch of fresh herbs like cilantro or basil or even parsley. And that's it. That's the coconut corn chowder in all its glory. Squeeze it with a bit of lemon. And I also love a few cracks of black pepper. My first suggestion on how to use up uh, your leftover corn chowder is probably the best thing to do with any thick soup or stew or chili. Uh, in my 
very humble opinion, which is to stuff it into a baked potato. I love baked potatoes and I've got a few here that I baked a little while ago so they're kind of wrinkly and funny looking. I wrote an entire blog post about my love for baked potatoes and throwing baked potato parties. People are really hesitant at first when you say you're serving baked potatoes for a dinner party and then they come over and it's this complete like spread of all of their favorite things cheeses and beans and like thick nice hearty fillings like this chowder or like a chili or whatever and tons of salady things and it's just great it's a great thing to do so i've got a baked potato here i'm just gonna cut her open and ladle some of this corn chowder on top you could use butter if you want I think a lot of people have a hard time eating potatoes without butter, but this chowder is pretty rich. Oh, look at that. This is leftovers, you guys. This is my idea of, like, this is better than even just eating it on its own. Isn't that great? So that's usage number one, baked potato eyes, that chowder. The next way I'm gonna use up my leftover chowder is by just using it as basically like a cross between a veggie and a sauce. So I'm just gonna put a big puddle of it on the bottom of a plate. And then that's a nice looking bed for maybe a piece of protein of some kind. I've got some salmon cooked up. So I've got a nice little piece of salmon. I might just break it up a bit. Mmm, nice sockeye salmon. So this leftover chowder has suddenly been given new life with a big piece of juicy salmon. And I can squeeze some lemon over that, which would be excellent. Oops, got all the seeds. We'll just make sure we get those out of there. Um, what else should that have? A bit of pepper. A few sprinkles of crunchy salt. Delish, fresh, fresh new dinner. Like you wouldn't even know it's leftovers, you know? The third method for using up these leftovers is kind of a f extra fun one, I think. And it's basically just turning it into like a pasta sauce. I had five leftover lasagna noodles in a box that have been sitting in my drawer for way too long because I'm never gonna use them because who is using five lasagna noodles? That would be the smallest lasagna ever. Instead, I just busted them in half into kind of like weird, odd pieces. And I'm just gonna toss them in with this leftover chowder and make like a makeshift kind of freeform lasagna, I guess. So I'm just gonna toss it. This is, I mean, it's certainly weird, but I don't think it's gonna be bad. I think it's gonna be really good. So all the chowder is kind of coating all these like weirdly odd bobs and bits of lasagna noodles. I'm just gonna chuck that into a skillet or a casserole dish or whatever. It's kind of like, Pretty good there. And then maybe grate a little cheese on top just to make it real lasagna-y. This is cheddar, really old white cheddar. I mean, this is just a quick, quick, you know, leftover makeover. It's what I'm all about. Fire that in the oven for like five minutes to just give it a little crust. There's only one thing left to do, and that is check on our weird lasagna makeshift freeform 
corn chowder lasagna. <laughs> Here it is. Actually, this looks pretty darn good if you ask me. So, I mean, that's a great dinner, isn't it? Doesn't it look like a great dinner? Looks like a great, I love how the top bit gets a little bit crispy. You get nice little, nice little bits. You can use anything here instead of oddly shaped lasagna noodles. You could use any pasta or even rice would be good for this. Rice would be really good for this um, or any kind of grain you want. So I'm just gonna rip a few basil leaves on top because I felt like it. And maybe a little squeeze of lime just because we had lemon on it last night with the potato and the salmon. So maybe we'll have a lime this time. Mm. I think I'd like to dive into this one. Ooh. Okay, it's easier said than done because these noodles are pretty big. Maybe I'll get a knife. Mmm. 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 It is delicious, indeed, but it's missing one thing. gotta have the hot sauce. I I love all hot sauce, but I'm gonna go sriracha this time. Just, just completely shameless with it. <laughs> I'm so excited about that. Does that excite you? If that excites you, I think that you came to the right channel. I think you and I could get along just fine. Mmm, mmm, this is a, such a good one. Okay, leftover chowder lasagna complete. So from our original chowder, which took about half an hour, 40 minutes to make, we now have a chowder stuffed baked potato. We also have a chowdery vegetable sauce base for some beautiful seared salmon. And we have a really nice chowder lasagna <laughs> you can jazz this up however you want if you have any leftover rotisserie chicken you could put it in there um, any other veggies some broccoli would be nice so that's it that's our that's our leftover so that's once one chowder four nights of dinners i feel like that's pretty impressive i hope you liked this episode if you did give it a thumbs up and if you think you've got some friends that might be into it, I'd love it if you'd share my channel with them. And uh, we'll see you next week. Ow. <laughs> it's hot. It's hot. Look at how good that looks. This excites me beyond belief. It's just, this is just, this is how we do it, folks.